everybody. I'm here today to talk to you about what the heck is that? Nope, not this again. Spanning 190 miles and three states, Interstate 93 is one of the interstates in the Northeast. It's existed since 1957 and originally comprised several expressways through Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Additional construction was completed in 1982 in Vermont and 1988 in New Hampshire. I-93's northern terminus is at a T-interchange with Interstate 91 just south of St. Johnsbury. Weirdly enough, 93 South starts off by going north to Junction State Route 18, nearly missing US-2 in the process. From this point, 93 does regain its sense of direction as it curves back to the south, headed straight for New Hampshire. And we get there soon enough, as 93 does not have any more exits in Vermont, besides the two in St. Johnsbury. We cross into NH by passing over the Connecticut River and State Route 135, which we meet an exit for about a half mile later. Interestingly, there appears to be a dam nearby. 135 reprises its role as the subject of our next exit, this time in the town of Littleton. Also in Littleton is an exit for Cottage Street, followed by US 302 again, which heads east for Maine, never to be seen by us again. Next up on the chopping block is the small village of Franconia, which has two and a half exits. Following this, 93 joins US 3 as it turns south to traverse the Franconia Notch. Now who wants to commit a sin? That's right. In light of environmental concerns surrounding a potential freeway cutting through the Franconia Notch, I-93 reuses the old right-of-way from US Route 3 and cuts down to a Super 2 freeway, an interstate with just one lane in each direction. Originally, this wasn't even considered part of I-93, and signs were put up denoting that this is a connector to 93, but eventually NHDOT gave up and just went ahead with signing this as I-93, even though it doesn't quite measure up to the interstate standards. Oh, and while I was exploring this oddity, I found a sign here that encourages drivers to dim their lights, I presume for animals. While in our minimalized state, we meet three exits and several overlooks and trails. The amount of green on Google Maps here is overwhelming, though when you think about it, that's probably a good thing. Eventually, US-3 separates and we change back to our standard four-lane interstate. That said, although US-3 separates from us, it doesn't leave us entirely, and it will continue to parallel us for the foreseeable future. I'll put a little counter in the top of the screen to keep track of how many times we've met US-3 so far. This is seen in our next exit, which is US-3 for North Woodstock and North Lincoln. Following this up is an exit for State Route 112 in Lincoln, which connects to US-3 in the west and nothing of interest in the east. Exit 31 brings up Tripoli Road, which is closed during winter, so don't get your hopes up if you're planning on traveling there six months from now. And add another one to the US-3 counter. Actually, make it two. Thankfully, State Route 49 breaks our streak, while also bringing us control cities of Campton and Waterville Valley. Up ahead is an exit that, while it doesn't directly connect to US-3, the distance between 3 and the exit is only 400 feet, so I'm going to go ahead and add that one to the counter as well. Next up is a trumpet interchange with state routes 25 and 3A for Plymouth, and... Oh my god, it's a university! Up ahead is an exit with state route 175A, which in my opinion is the easiest way to access Plymouth from the interstate. Next up after that is an exit for state route 25 and US-3 for Ashland and Holderness. And you're not going to believe this, but US-3 leaves us for a while. Oh, the betrayal! Next up is State Routes 104 and 132 for Meredith and New Hampton. From here we parallel State Route 132 until Sam Borton, where we meet both Route 127 and a rest stop, but weirdly enough, only on one side of the interstate. Oh, and look who it is, and oh boy, you brought some friends. Route 132 returns from the dead to haunt us once more, and there's the northbound rest stop, by the way. By now, we're paralleling the Merrimack River, and we continue with it into Concord. On our way to Concord, we meet US Route 4 and begin a concurrency with it, which will persist until our later interchange with Interstate 393 in downtown Concord. Also, Interstate 393! Tell me more! I-393 runs just over 4 miles to the east of Concord and is concurrent with US Routes 4 and 202 the whole time. Its sole purpose is to bypass the traffic of the nearby business district on New Hampshire Route 9 while getting back on 93, we meet Route 9 at Exit 14, which is also in downtown Concord. And then, to nobody's surprise, we meet US 3 again. Following this is an exit with State Route 3A and then the eastern terminus of Interstate 89. By this point, 93 is now a six-lane turnpike heading south for Boston. We find an exit with who else but Route 3A, followed by our first interchange with Interstate 293. Exiting our own road, we are now headed southeast, meeting Route 3A and then crossing the Merrimack River. Surprise! <laughs> It's a cloverleaf with US Route 3, which takes you into Manchester. Also in Manchester is a wide interchange with New Hampshire Route 101. This is succeeded by another wide interchange, this time with Interstate 293 again. Next up are exits with State Routes 28 and 102 in Derry, as well as Route 111 in Wyndham, which has some unusually long exit ramps. Finally, we meet State Routes 97 and 38, and then cross into our third and final state, Massachusetts. 
Our first exit here is a big one with State Route 213 which connects us to Interstate 495. This exit is immediately followed by one of a much smaller size, that being with Pelham Street. State Route 113 also appears before we cross the Merrimack River again into Andover. We must be getting close to Boston as our next exit is a cliff with the one and only Interstate 495, that is if you ignore the four other I-495s that there are. We also meet an interchange with State Route 133, 125, 62, and 129. Then, weirdly enough, is a T interchange, but the weird part is that it doesn't go anywhere. Oh well, next up is the end all be all I-95, which is signed north for Waltham and south for Peabody. Ew. You'd think given the immense traffic on both of these roads, MassDOT would maybe consider upgrading this form of Cloverleaf to an interchange with a higher traffic capacity, but nope. Next up are two exits in Stoneham before 93 meets these roundabout interchanges in Medford. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before. In downtown Medford is a cramped trumpet interchange with what looks to be an incomplete freeway but was probably cancelled a while ago. Next up is an exit for State Route 28 and then we begin a concurrency with US Route 1. We then cross the Charles River and enter downtown Boston. I'm not going to bother trying to cover every road we meet in downtown Boston because the roads here can range from Yeah, this is pretty alright to What the f The highlights are Massachusetts Route 1A and Interstate 90, which is followed by several smaller roads as we continue southward. Finally, we meet Routes 3A and 203, right before crossing the Neponset River out of Boston and into Milton. Milton gives us an interchange with Granite Avenue, which quickly gives way to the city of Quincy, where we meet a wide interchange with State Route 3 and turn to the west. In our final stretch of I-93, we meet a cloverleaf with State Route 28, a T interchange with State Route 24, and finally a cloverleaf with State 138. At the end of our nearly 200 mile journey, we meet a cloverleaf turned trumpet interchange with who else but Interstate 95.